to see how they function. Mm. You've got to see how the decision making is made and where it goes to and how mm. it comes about. Yeah. And I think that's a particularly important skill set you need yeah. to deal with. Yeah, yeah. And I think too many people just think they can do it. <laughs> do the job. You're all good to go. Good to go. Cool. <coughs> okay. So um, just to just to kick things off, um, obviously we've had this massive weather event recently, not the first in <laughs> in recent years. But will that reprioritise your thinking going into council? Well, I think it does, and it should. Um, I think it's very important to look at the trends there and it'd be quite obvious in some areas there's been uh, significant uh, damage and, and I'm very sorry for the, the residents. I think we're very grateful living in a society that we do that um, uh, people help, help willingly and, and that's sort of great community we do have. Uh, and priorities, yes I think it's very important to review the whole situation. Uh, there's things like uh, drainage and uh, stormwater things that really need to be looked at and I think if you look fairly at it um, you would see that there, there are areas which are affected have been affected before mm -hmm. and maybe there's a time now to refocus on what we can do for these areas to improve things. And, and has the impact on the, on the water system, has that changed your thinking in any way towards three waters and what is your position on the three waters? Well the three waters are something I'm, I'm, um, I'm, not a, I'm opposed to and I'm opposed to for a reason. Um, I, think, I think the critical thing is with three waters is that um, it's, it's an area that's been uh, developed by the government, mm -hmm. It's an area which they want to take control of the stormwater, the, the irrigation, no, not the irrigation, the stormwater, mm -hmm. um, drinking water think, provisions. Um, I, I think quite clearly that we need a local focus. I don't think we should give away our assets in that basis. I think we should control it locally. I don't see any benefit from joining a bigger, bigger grouping of people. And particularly with Wellington, I think it's very obvious if you follow the news, that their infrastructure is, is more, and more it's very bad and very poor condition. Mm -hmm. They haven't spent the money on their infrastructure systems and as such I think they would uh, levy here for Wellington's uh, shortcomings to be honest. Mm -hmm. I think um, the other thing is what I think is important is that we don't give away our assets. Mm -hmm. I think it's better for local communities to have local focus and I think they can, um, they should reconsider their position. And, and just in terms of the issues that are facing um, the region, what do you think is the biggest issue that's facing Tasman District in the next five years? Well, uh, the biggest challenge in my view, and I say it without hesitation, is that the, uh, the excessive debt that we've councils incurred mm -hmm. through the Lee Valley Dam and mm -hmm. the cost overruns. Um, it's, it's, uh, it started off at $74 million. It was attended out at $104 million. Uh, and they basically ensure, uh, said to the community, this is a fixed term contract uh, with a little bit in, a little bit of slack in between. It's wor worked out that we are now at the price of 195 million dollars of interest. Though is that uh, three years ago that I told the council that their costings would be 193 million dollars, within one percent of what it currently is. And we try to warn them about the cost overruns, the likely cost overruns, but I don't think anyone was listening. 70% uh, of the dam price has, has been completed and it's now $195 million and rising and there's still one third of it still to go. The Auditor General offered a warning to this council in a period of time when it was at $150 million that the cost ratio benefit from from debt mm -hmm. to the ratepayers was excessive and they needed to reduce it and stop continuing down that pathway. The council, or more correctly, uh, uh, the ratepayers are paying all these cost overruns. Mm -hmm. Now when the, when the council went into partnership with the irrigators and formed Waimea Irrigation, uh, Waimea Irrigation to form Waimea Waters Limited, the ratio of um, council shareholding was 51%. The ratio of the irrigators uh, contribution and involvement was 49%. And we are the only people, the ratepayers are paying these cost overruns at present. If I was elected as mayor and with the support of the councillors, the irrigators would meet their 49% commitment rather than paying nothing as they are at present. So that would be the solution for you, because obviously the dam is almost built. Yes, so, it is. So, the, so, the, so the money's being spent essentially, and, and the project 
you know, presumably will need to be completed now because it's so far down the track. So the solution would be to redress the financial imbalance, is that? Correct. Um, I think Tasman District Council, and I'm sorry to say this, have gone soft on the irrigators. Um, they made a business commitment to, to purchase into this uh, things. They own, they use up 91% uh, of the water rights on the Waimea Plains, 9% is the TDC, and they just need to front up to the uh, so How many people would that be? I've got, I don't have a sense of the number of, of individuals that <coughs> would, would fall on. Oh, I, I'm not sure. I think I think no. there's about three thousand people. Right. There's three thousand odd shares that were eventually sold right. up yeah. uh, to make it a viable option. Um, it's not it's not that at all. It's a purely a business decision. And and what is quite interesting is in their sheer perspective when it was put out in 2018, clearly said that um, that in the event the council may put a targeted rate on their uh, on people holding the shareholdings into the stand project. It basically in, in is really an irrigation project. Um, if you looked outside of Tasman, you looked at Canterbury, where they wanted irrigation for, for their farming needs, they had to do it themselves with no, no, no council support. Uh, it's a business decision to go ahead and do it in the first place. And like all business expenses, if you make a decision, you, you need to pay your way instead of putting the cost back onto the ratepayers. You, you wouldn't see that supporting that sort of economic activity to keep the region vibrant in terms of those irrigators is a positive thing to do? If you think you compare it to roads, which are also paid for by the ratepayers, but essentially support businesses who need to access them, you don't put that in the same sort of place? I, I think there is an economic benefit from, from both people, and I encourage that. Mm. All I'm saying is when, when costs, are, uh, at the end of the day, the costs should be a portion to where they lie, to be honest. Right, no, no that's, and that's really clear. Thank you. Um, uh, another question I had was just around, sometimes we hear from businesses that council's not that easy to deal with. <laughs> Particularly, we hear that from developers and people who are in, in, you know, working with the regulatory arm of council. If elected as mayor, how would you propose to make the council enable business development as opposed to be a bit of a handbrake? Well, I think, I think your comment's quite correct. Mm. I think there was a handbrake on a person. Um, I see the I see it as coming through the Resource Management Act, which was put in place in 1991. It has now been replaced by three sets of legislation, and I believe that at the end of this year, those pieces of legislation will more likely be invoked. the The Resource Management Act at both councils means there's a significant strain and pressure on the staff facing their capacity issues. I don't believe that on the majority of occasions they can achieve their 20 day working day um, outcomes. I think it's more, it's more important to realise that there's not qualified staff you can employ to undertake that work. However, as a Mayor and under this new legislation, there's one thing I would say is that Nelson City Council and Tasman District Council should combine with their impressions of the, the regulations. There shouldn't be a difference between one council to the other. I also say that you can simplify the process, and I think there's ways and means to looking at looking at the procedures, and the processes to make sure that this can work in a more timely manner. And um, you mentioned then about the, both councils having the same approach. Would, would do you support amalgamation between Nelson City and Tasman District Councils? I think it's coming. Yeah. I I think um, quite clearly. Um, Amalgamation will will be. Uh, uh, I think if you look at the previous government, you look at the government's approach now. I think it's only a matter of time before they'll amalgamate both things. Tasman District Councils, uh, when they went to the people, opposed the the uh, amalgamation, and they had a very good reason. Uh, basically, it was the fear representation on a new council. Uh, most councils are, are represented on a population basis. And I think if you could get uh, through, there's a better option of putting it on the basis of the geographical areas, so that areas like Murchison, Tarkaka, mm -hmm. Motuaka could be fairly represented rather than just Richmond and Nelson City. Um, uh, I also think that uh, when you look at the bigger picture, Nelson and, and um, Tasman currently do a lot of joint ventures. They've got the airport, they've got uh, Saxonsville, regional sewerage, uh, regional landfill, there's not much left out now, so it makes sense. 
And the, and the last things perhaps is the staffing arrangements. Currently, TDC is struggling to provide staffing accommodation for their people. Mm. Nelson City Council's building looks like it's had its day. And really, would you build two buildings or would you build one and combined? I'd say build one and amalgamate. That would be my choice. Great, thank you. Um, and just for thinking about housing in the region, which is a big issue at the moment, particularly for businesses who are trying to attract staff, people from outside of the region who can't find somewhere to live that's affordable, if, it's, if anything is available. What do you think council's role is in terms of helping to provide housing? Well, well council's core role is, and is regulation and infrastructure. It's not the council's role, in my view, to be involved in accommodation. Mm -hmm. However, in saying that, I think the council could make it a lot easier for providing accommodation blocks and such so like. By allowing things like putting an accommodation block on an existing house and mm. property, where previously they'd make them as a separate identity, mm. I think that's quite a focused thing. I think there's, there's a lot of in-building which could be done, mm. but the council would have to get on board. Without any hesitation, I'd say, yes, I'd support that principle. So that intensification of housing rather than just letting it continue to spread. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Um, and I guess, um, in line with development that's happened in in, um, in the region, and obviously we've seen a lot of development in Lower Queen Street and other places, that's had an impact on the roading infrastructure. A again, what do you see Council's role is in trying to alleviate those arterial flows going in and out of the uh, Richmond and into Nelson? Well, I live down Lower <laughs> Queen Street, <laughs> mm. and as good luck would have yeah. it, I live right opposite where the main flow of the traffic mm. is. Um, I, would, I would have, as a Mayor, there's some things that need to occur. The traffic from uh, in and out of Nelson needs to continually flow. It needs to stop. Uh, the council have on the, the next year's um, project uh, to putting in traffic lights at Berry Field intersection with mm. Queen Lower Queen Street. I would cancel that. I would use that money to put a free turning lane at the Queen Street light so that there's no traffic lights from any traffic travelling into or out of Nelson. Um, if you looked at the what the council's uh, did about a year ago at Berry Field Drive, there was a the cars couldn't get out of the prison with all these houses, and there's about a thousand houses going into this block of land. What the engineers did, and I, I must congratulate them, and they did a very good job. They put a merging lane in, mm. and what happens is the cars currently come out of uh, Berryfield Drive or McShane's Road into a merging lane. The traffic flows, it doesn't stop, and no one's held up. And um, that's what should stay and continue to get to function. I would allocate the $2.8 million they're putting in for traffic lights, which would just make the matters worse into putting in a slip mm. lane into, into Nelson. Mm. Um, I, it shouldn't stop, the traffic should flow either way, straight all the time, without any traffic lights from Nelson mm. out to the country. That's how I would see that developing. And just thinking a little bit about climate change, because obviously that's something that's um, very topical at the moment, and again, given the weather events that we're seeing, and it's having an impact in so many ways. If you were elected as Mayor of Tasman District Council, how would you use that position to um, help people understand the situation and, and work towards finding ways to mitigate it? Well, I support the Tasman um, uh, Climate Change Action Plan. Mm. I think the council needs to show clear leadership. I think they need to be upfront mm. with, with education. I think they need to inform the, the, the population about what can be achieved and how it can be achieved. I think they want to show more resilience to the impacts. Um, we need to reduce the greenhouse gas emissions. And the way I think you can go about that is uh, the recent state of emergency is, is a very good thing and the council should be wise enough to take a learning from this and say how do we improve on, on the position with all the effects of the climate change. And it could be promoting material, stopping gridlock, um, looking at uh, better practices, um, cutting waste down and things like that. All those things, the transport system needs to be um, looked at quite significantly mm. to improve on this. Way. Would you consider something along the lines of making all residential properties and commercial properties for that matter look at putting solar power systems in as part of their build? It's a great idea. And the other thing is I'd put on at the same time is, is uh, roof, rainwater roof mm. tanks. Mm. So um, people had a constant supply of grey water mm. for, their, for their washing their cars and doing watering their gardens and things like that. Yeah. 
Very interestingly enough is the, the water that we currently use is go through our treatment plant. 2% of it's used for drinking, mm. the rest is grey water. Maybe we need to think in a different way. Mm. And just thinking about um, the, the wider sort of economic development function of councils, well, how do you think councils should operate in the space of economic development and what do you think it should do to encourage promotion of the region um, and how far involved do you think a council should be in that? With economic benefits? Yeah, with economic development. So looking at um, you know, the role of a council in terms of in ensuring that the, the economic environment is one that businesses can then flourish and benefit from. I think it's a very important part of things. I think it's quite important that we um, that we fully support things. Mm. I'm a great believer in supporting major events in mm. the community. I think both Tasman and Nelson can, is a huge economic benefit from it. I think in the last two years it's been particularly hard on businesses and the tourist industry. Mm. A very good example of this will be the Bay, Bay Dreams Festival mm. coming in 2020. 23, it attracts 25,000 mm -hmm. revellers. Mm -hmm. My gosh, and they look like they enjoy themselves. Mm -hmm. But what the council needs to do is make this festival experience a positive thing. They need to talk about our region leaving our region mm -hmm. so they'll come back. And the sort of involvement I would see the councils doing is providing the organisers with with things like uh, temporary camping mm -hmm. grounds, seating, mm -hmm. road traffic signs, freshwater tankers and things like this which encourage an organisation to come back because it simplifies their processes mm -hmm. of facilitating care and things in the community. I think it's got a huge benefit, some of these attractions to the community. Great. And um, just in a nutshell, could you describe your leadership style? Well, that's very nice. <laughs> well, I, I think we can do things better. Mm -hmm. um, my leadership style is um, I'm open, mm -hmm. I'm genial, I'm a listener, I'm firm but not controlling. Mm -hmm. So I'd see myself. Nice. And if, some, if <coughs> you were to say to somebody or someone was to ask you, why should I vote for you to be the mayor of Tasman, what would you say? I'd say let's think, do things better. I have life experiences. I know the local body um, processes and the local body acts. I have business experiences. Mm -hmm. I know how to manage people. And I think Max Clark for me would be a good choice.